welcome everyone to another episode of Journeys of Faith. And my guest today is Len Morrison. Len is a longtime uh, parishioner uh, here at Ave Maria Parish, and he has served on our parish pastoral council. And now he has a new leadership position of being the the chairperson of the Our Lady of the Assumption School Board of Specified Jurisdiction. A definitely a committed all-in parishioner. So welcome, Len. Happy Thanks, to Bob. have you here. Good to be here. So Len, let's just begin with your early years, your childhood, your growing up, and what role faith and church uh, played in your early years. Sure. So I, I was the product of... Uh, Catholic school education through half of grade four. Um, you know, we had moved towns, and so I, I, at that point, I had, we had moved to a, a public school. But um, yeah, I still have very vivid memories. They're getting farther in the distance now, but uh, maybe it's through photographs. But of uh, you know, that was where I guess I was first introduced to sacraments and, and, and to, to faith. Um, but honestly, the, the the journey really began through uh, the family. You know. Is to most people, um, you know. I we were regular mass attendees uh, here at, at uh, Saint Maria, uh, and then later at OLA. Um, and uh, it, it wasn't just mass, though. It was you know, as I look back on my my teenage years, it was um, seeing my my mother as a religious ed teacher. Of course, I didn't fully appreciate it at the time. Um, my father would be taking me to men's retreats during. Uh, you know, during Lent, and mm -hmm. I was a, I was a teenager, and you know that's that was pretty unusual at the time. For uh, I think it's pro perhaps more rare today, but you know those were you know as I as I look back, those were experiences that um, really reinforced reinforced faith to me. Um, as I uh, grew older, went to college. Um, you know, of course, I, uh, like many, I, I, I wouldn't say that I drifted away, but I, I did not fully appreciate the, the depth and the richness of, of the Catholic faith. Um, I still uh, regularly attended Mass, um, um, but it probably was not until um, my, my daughter was, was born and uh, we were looking at schools. You know, I was a product of a public school. In fact, where we lived, I expected her to attend the public school that I attended. And walk, we right. were in walking distance, and we decided to, to look at OLA, and uh, we went there for, for preschool, and we saw the children, the kindergartners in uniforms. And honestly, that was one of those moments when everything changed for me. Like, I saw, I, I saw my role differently. I saw... The opportunity to help form them in their faith, and um, and so that began a very a very long journey into sort of their education in the faith, but even more importantly, mine. Um, um, and I I'll, I'll go back to my to my my parents. Um, you know, my mother had retired uh, around age sixty or sixty two, and uh, she began teaching English to. Uh, Spanish seminarians, Latin seminarians, mm -hmm. wow. who were you know, working uh, in Lynn. And she befriended them over a course of, of years. And, and, and she and her friends, as retirees, would, would go to Lynn on a weekly basis, teach English, um, and they became part of the family. And this is back in the, in the early 90s. Um, and she, you know, of course she was blessed to ultimately see two of them um, become ordained and oh, wow. and so I, you know, at the time I, I was I sort of marveled at her her ability to uh, you know stay involved and connected and, and the service component um, but now I look back and say you know that was such a, a, a rich opportunity for her to to give back and so I you know I, I've tried to kind of continue in that in that tradition um, albeit one thing I lacked was a a, a, a grounding in, in faith. Um, I knew how important it was. Um, I, I was delighted that my children were uh, were uh, attending Catholic school, <clears throat> but my own 
uh, knowledge was pretty deficient um, until, honestly, my early 40s. And um, it was, you know, as Shirley would say, the Holy Spirit. Um, <laughs> she said that all the time. So. Shirley is mother's name. Right, right, yes. right. So, you know, she had, these, <laughs> she had these sayings that just were part of who she was, whether it was, you know, we know not the day or the hour, or you're only a breath away, or all these things. But but the most common saying was, "It's the Holy Spirit," and and I can I can talk forever about that influence. She yeah. just a remarkable person, and I had the privilege of getting to know her. Um, so is it is it your thought? Land that your parents were really the role models. You may not have had the extended educational uh, background or training in the faith, but that speaks to me anyway of the importance of role models in, yeah, the, in it, the faith. It, it absolutely was, and you know, my children have attended um, Catholic schools since pre, since they were three years old, and now they're in Catholic universities. So, yeah. um, but ultimately, <clears throat> as I look back on my own life it was the role models that made the difference and it was the subtleties it was the expectations it was it was what they said but it also was what they didn't say when they when they held their tongue you know when they yes. when they endured a difficulty how they persevered and and what they drew upon to do that and, I, and you know at the time you know when you're a teenager or in your early 20s it's easy to overlook that but um, in my case, and I'm sure with so many others, it's when we, we, we look back with, through a different lens, with a different perspective, that we can appreciate how powerful those, those actions were, were and, and those, those, those words. So, Lynn, I think the, um, you, you raise a great point there. And um, so you got married, and then your three girls came along, and everything. What did you bring into your role as a parent uh, with with the influence of your mom and dad? You know, now now maybe more in the forefront of your mind. Yeah, it was it was probably uh, uh, giving back uh, the service, the, the the active participation um, in in the faith, and you know it began rather. Uh, you know, coincidentally, uh, a, a friend suggested that I uh, come to his religious ed class and, and, and watch. Now, he was teaching seventh grade at the time. Mm -hmm. And there's a part of me that I think throughout my career was always leaning towards a teaching type role. Mm -hmm. And I sat in the class and I, I was, uh, not only did I feel the confidence that, that I could also teach, but I, I Took the textbook, and this is a seventh grade textbook, and and I was reading the textbook, and I was, it was I found it so interesting, uh -huh. and I'm kind of a, a learner anyway in that right. respect. So to me, the written word was was pretty powerful, and it, it just kept feeding and feeding and feeding, and, and and I became sort of more excited the more I the more I read, and you know that led to just getting deeper and deeper. So I did obviously uh, begin. Teaching religious ed, loved it, enjoyed it. One of the, one of the best things I've I've done, and, and certainly would look to do again. Um, but then I, I enrolled in the, in a certificate program at St. John Seminary, which you know came at the worst time because Liz was pregnant, and I had to go every uh, once a, a Saturday every every month um, all day, and there was very significant reading. It was it was. A, Amazing reading, I enjoyed it, but it was time time away, sure. and so, um, but it, that just drove me, you know, drove my interest even further into you know how I can continue to nourish that, and you know, even to this day, like I, and you can talk about what you know how I, what I read and, and so forth. Um, you know, it really begins in, in the morning when I wake up. I'm I'm kind of a creature of habit, and so I subscribe to the Word Among Us. Give us this day. So I, I, I read both of them in a sort of complementary, um, not only 
the daily readings, but also the reflections uh, from each, and then uh, the component that's sort of a, they call it the blessed among us, but it's a, it's really a, a quick bio of, of people who have sort of demonstrated their faith, whether it's saints or very holy individuals, and very inspiring, it sort of sets my day, and, and, and so. And Len, I think that's, that's one area uh, I'd like to talk with you about because intellectual formation is so important uh, as um, as a Catholic priest and someone who's spent most of my years in the priesthood in formation teaching. Um, I I just think this is a vital part of what we do, not only at the faith formation, religious education, Catholic school level, but well into adulthood. So what kind of uh, literature or what kind of topics are you particularly interested in that really help you to grow in your faith, would you say? Sure, so I, I guess, um, I, you you know, the formal word might be the uh, exegesis of, of whether it's the Old Testament or the New Testament. And uh, a resource that I was introduced to in the last couple of years that I found really helpful is um, Word on Fire. So, uh, Bishop, From Bishop Aaron. Bishop Aaron. Mm -hmm. like, this, is, this is the most, some of the most powerful lectures, podcasts, um, uh, interpretations, I've, I, I've ever read, and, and I've introduced them to my wife, and I've said, if, when you hear this person's voice, which is probably what it was like 50 years ago for Fulton Sheen on the radio, sure. you know, but, sure. um, but this is just gripping uh, in his explanations, in his connection to, to present day um, events, present day activities uh, and, and, and influences, to ties in philosophy, it ties in history, it ties in culture, art, music. Um, just a, a very contemporary way to, to explain, explain the faith and to, to be a disciple. And it's, uh, I, I look forward to those every week um, on my walks. Um, and at the same time, there's, there's, there are others as well. Like I'll, I'll also listen to um, Father Mike Schmitz, which a different perspective, a different approach clearly geared towards a college audience, which I find also very interesting. Yeah. Uh, he's a college chaplain. Um, and, you know, other, other sort of supplementary readings. I, I subscribe to the pilot. I think that's there's some amazing writers in the pilot, mm -hmm. whether it's George Weigel or uh, even the sports section is interesting yeah. and what's going on. And, and obviously the messages from Pope Francis uh, on, on the readings are, right. you know, again, clarified. Um, over the years, I, I would dabble with, maybe it might be America ma Magazine, or mm -hmm. uh, it might be First Things, if I want something a little more deeper. I, I, I sort of run out of, run out of time at different parts of my life, so I'd have to sort of cancel and move on and, and refocus. But, um, you know, the, probably James Martin's book uh, on the Saints was, like that's very good. That's really, really good. I read that a number of years ago, and uh, and then you know you you provide the books by uh, Matt Kelly, which I also enjoy, and I, I'm very appreciative to the person who donated those. But what a what a gift. great very gift! Nice. I mean, that person. I, I hope he gets thanked. I'll personally thank whoever you are for, for doing <laughs> that. It's very thoughtful. Um, and uh, you know, Robert Barron wrote the book Catholicism. And it was on PBS, mm -hmm. and so you know that to me was that's a must read, a book you could read over and over again. Absolutely. So you have multiple roles: you're a husband, you're a father, you work at MIT, you are very involved in the uh, leadership role in our uh, school, Our Lady of the Assumption School. You've been on our parish pastoral council since I arrived here eight and a half years ago. You have been a great advisor uh, to me in that time period. So how does all of that reading and your 
you know, practice of the faith, how does that help you in all of those different venues, at work, in family, for the school and parish? How does, how does your reading you know, feed your faith using your, your language so that it, it helps you? Yeah, it's a, it's a, it's a good question. Uh, it, um, you know, I, I, I guess um, the, the readings sort of reinforce you know, who I am and what's important to me, you know, how I choose to, to lead my life. Um, I'm, I'm, I'm moving more and more towards service. It, it's drawing me. It's, it's profoundly rewarding. Um, the reading sort of they reinforce that there's evidence of others who have who have sacrificed who have dedicated their lives to to their faith um, is inspiring and so when I feel like I've taken on too much maybe or I'm too too stressed or um, there are readings that um, you know uh, address that P perhaps the most challenging is um, Another one of Shirley's sayings, or you, you gotta, you gotta, you gotta give it up. You gotta, you gotta have faith that um, it will be all right. And you know, we've all been through difficult mm. situations, and for me, it's been so. Despite uh, everything, it's been so hard to, in some cases, to have that kind of deep faith that I can give it up, that I can rely on. God to to, to 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 make it all work out, you know. And, you know, His will be done. It's it's very hard to uh, to not feel that I can play the role that to to address everything, to solve everything, to minimize the anxiety, to handle the stress, to achieve what I think is important to achieve. It's, so I struggle with that, you know. But the readings certainly certainly help, um, and in recollecting what um, my parents would say, which is, you know, it's, it's out of our hands, or it's, you know. Have you had any doubts? Have, have doubts creeped into your mind, or are there periods of life? I think you sort of indicated that in young adulthood, which is fairly common, you know, where faith just doesn't play that prominent role, you know, in your thinking and your priorities and everything. And have have you had that? Um, I I have it. I I don't know that I would call it doubts because that would be to you know to have doubt in God was it was not something I could imagine. But it, it certainly was on the back burner. It it wasn't front of mind. It was, you know, I I could attribute it to just developmentally. I I, I wasn't mature, my brain hadn't developed to the point where I could appreciate, um, I could appreciate, you know, the, the profound importance of faith. Um, I, I was, you know, could sort of go through the motions, <coughs> attend mass, but not fully appreciate it, partly because of knowledge, you know, honestly, to not fully, to not fully understand uh, the Eucharist, to not fully understand the, um, the, the source and summit of our faith uh, is a... It, it is was an issue for me, and I know it's an issue for many. I, you know, having taught religious education and asking the children about how involved their parents are in, in attending, taking them to mass, and um, so I, I, I agree with you 100 percent that it begins with knowledge. We, we have to understand our faith. It's not about just attending mass. Uh, it's not about leaving it to the school to educate our, our kids in the faith. It begins at home, it begins with the family. That's, that's job number one. Um, and it's not a job that pays immediate rewards. Uh, right. It wasn't for me, probably not gonna be for my kids, but at some right. point, we look back and we say, you know, I remember when, you know, she, you know, she, she was conducting that, participating in that level of service when she was teaching here, when they, she was, he was attending that retreat when, he did that for someone else. Um, those come back, and I think those really reinforce. And, but time, you know, time will tell. And it, I think you're bringing up a very good point that knowledge leads to understanding, which should lead to action. You know, a behavior, behavior, things that that express 
the, the faith that you've learned, that you've understood. Right. Um, Lynn, you, you've certainly highlighted the role of your parents as role models. Are there any other you know, people that, sh that you really can think of and name you know, that really have supported you? Faith, faith is, a, is not a static reality. It can grow, it can wither. So are, are there any other people who come to your mind and how they modeled faith for you? Well, um, I, I have, um, I know other devout Catholics. In fact, I would, I would, I would define them as more overtly um, evangelical, uh, mm -hmm. true disciples. Like they're very gifted and comfortable sharing their faith with others. And, and that's something, I, I'm not certain I'm there yet. Like maybe it's through actions, maybe it's through modeling behaviors, but it's not the ability to, to necessarily stand up and say um, uh, or profess my faith in certain, in certain circumstances. And I admire that courage. And I think about that, you know, in, in instances, like social gatherings, when you least expect it, someone says grace at a you know public restaurant. I just don't see that today. You just you just stop and say, "Wow!" Like, not something I would immediately do, but I've got to give that person a lot of credit for for that. And so I I'm very um, aware and conscious of so what I would call sort of courageous behavior in today's world. Um, to, visibly devote their faith. Sometimes it takes stepping out of your comfort zone. You know, uh, it's easier to stay quiet than sometimes speak a word about your faith. Um, but, you know, speaking of that, you um, have talked very persuasively, I think, about the role of ongoing formation, ongoing education in the faith. Um, what would you say to our viewers? You know, you are an all-in Catholic in, in that you, you serve our community of faith in many different ways, Len. And um, perhaps that goes back to your mom and dad, you know, in, in their own way. They quietly just went about their service, you know, of others. You certainly um, exemplify that. What would you say, given your experience, the importance of, of ongoing faith formation, the need to be good evangelizers, if not just in uh, word or action, both, you know? But what would you say to our, yeah. our viewers? I, I would say that um, <clears throat> certainly it, 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 can, it can begin with knowledge for, for, for individuals to to learn baseline understanding of their faith. Um, uh, the resources are there. They're immensely uh, engaging. Like, if you're gonna watch a, a, a Netflix video or you're gonna read a book or a magazine, like the resources that are available are gripping in, 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 in terms of their ability to inform. And I think that's just the first you know, step into the water. Um, secondly, that we're all given gifts, um, and to appreciate those gifts, and to lean into our our strengths, um, as opposed to focusing on areas where we may not be as strong. I know where I'm weak. I know where I can't contribute, but I also have a pretty good understanding of where I, I can contribute, and I lean into that. Um, and for some, it may not be you know crafting a document, but it may be serving in a soup kitchen. It may be volunteering in a social service agency on a weekend. It may be building something, something I can't do. Uh, you know, it could be driving someone. It could be you know the corporal works of mercy. You know, we think of it that way. And you know, I I think as I move forward, I look ahead of uh, a few years. I'm, I'm, I'm going to be more drawn to those types of activities because I find them so gratifying and, mm -hmm. and, and the need is there. And 
and it's also important for for us who can to to give to help to serve you know um, so the, the, the opportunities are boundless we tend to get tied up in our in our own lives and it's whether it's sports or recreation or you know the, the, the you know other other concerns uh, other anxieties other you know with work um, but at the end of the day we've got to have faith that you know God will provide it will be taken care of this anxiety will pass and uh, and I think that's the that's really an important aspect for that's helped me so in summary, I think your message is keep learning about your Catholic faith yeah. so that you can continue to contribute, give of your gifts to support the mission of the church. Absolutely. Yeah. We all, we all St. Paul said, we have the gifts. Yeah. Put them to good use. Put them to good use. Thank you very much, Len. My pleasure. And Wonderful. thank you for joining us, everyone. And be sure to tune in next time for another episode of Journeys of Faith.